Hello everyone, Mice here. Welcome to this tutorial on how to rig a bot for a character in Blender. In this video we'll cover where to put the bones so the bot can deform nicely, how to automate the deform movement, as well as adding some control if we need to move the bot in a specific way. Now, why should we add extra bones to the bot? This is only in specific cases where you want the bot to deform in a nice way or maybe you want to have some control in some of those areas. For this occasion, we'll be using a female model for this example, as I believe most of you people will use this kind of model for this type of rig, but do know that this can still apply for a male model. In any case, if you don't have a model, you can use this one I'm using right now. It's part of my human character tutorial series. I'll leave the link to that series on the description, as well as the blend file of the model I'm using. Also, if you just want to see how the bones for the bot are made, I'd suggest skipping to section 3 of the video, as that is when I'll be creating everything for that part. Otherwise, keep watching, as I'll just be creating an armature for the mesh, using Rigify's armature in this next section. Alright, let's begin. Alright, for this case I will be using Rigify's armature, as this will only have the basic bones you would have on a humanoid character. But the tutorial is going to focus on the butt bones. So I'm going to add the Rayify armature. Now I'm going to position the armature to the shape of the body. And I will be deleting bones like the hands, face and breast. As I don't need them for this occasion. And they could mess up the weight a bit. Do know that if you have your own rig. Then you don't need to do this. As for this video, we'll focus on the butt bones. The rest of the bones in the armature, aside from the thigh and the spine or hips bone, won't be used. So I'm gonna leave the time here of when I finish adding the armature so you can skip this part if you want to. Okay, we finished adding the armature. Now let's start adding the butt bones. Now before we start adding the necessary bones for the butt and making sure it's automated, I want to make sure you understand what we'll be doing here and how we'll be achieving an automatic deformation but also having a degree of control for the butt. First, to understand the amount of bones we'll have, the butt controls will be divided into three bones in total. First, the deformation bone, which we'll use specifically to assign the weight of the butt so we can use this bone to deform it, as well as using it to follow the control bone, which we'll talk about it in a bit. Second, the mechanism bone, used mainly to act as a medium between the hip or spine bone and the thigh bone. This way we can control how much we want our deformation bone to move when the thigh bone also moves. With this bone, we'll automate how much we want our butt bone to follow the leg. And finally, the control bone. This one will be used to freely control the deformation bone while still having the constraint of the mechanism. So it will naturally rotate along with the leg even if we move it a bit. So those are the three bones we'll be creating here. They aren't much bones or controls, but the job that they'll be doing in giving your character a more refined butt deformation and control will be noticeable. So first, let's take a look at the bones we are left in the butt area. As you can see, the only thing I have here is the thigh bone and the spine bone. The butt area is empty. So, the first thing I'll do is create a new bone, which will be used for the deformation bone. Position it like this, with the tip part of the bone touching this part of the butt. Something like this. Now I'm gonna parent this bone to the spine or hips bone. Depends on how you have it named, but it's this bone right here. Now I'm going to rename this bone to def.bot.l. The def is to symbolize that this will be a bone specifically used to deform the weights of the butt bar. And also, we're going to mirror all the butt bones later. 
One last thing to make sure is that this bone's C axis is facing either down or up. So to see that, I'm gonna go to the armature's data tab, open up this viewport display and enable axis. This will make it so you can see every bone's axis in the armature. On this video, I'm not gonna dive too much into the axis component of rigging, but do know that to make sure that our butt bone will deform and follow nicely, we must make sure that the C axis is looking up or down. Right now, the bone that we have created, the C axis is looking up. So the constraints that we're applying should work nice and well. But in the case that your bone C axis is not facing up or down, then you can rotate it with Ctrl R. Rotate it until the C axis is up or down. Another way you can rotate it is that you can use the value here to change the rotation. Okay, now with that done, we're gonna create the mechanism bone. To do that, we'll duplicate the deformation butt bone. Change the transformation pivot point to individual origins. So we can scale it on its normal. And then scale it down a bit, just like this. The mechanism bone will be smaller than the deformation bone. I'm gonna hide the deformation bone so it doesn't bother here. Now I'm gonna change the name of the bone to mch.butt.l. And we're gonna parent this bone to the spine or hips. Finally, I'm gonna disable the deform for this bone since it's not gonna be used to deform the weights of the mesh. And there it is. All right, next thing is to start adding the constraints to the mechanism and the formation bones. So let's start with the mechanism one first. I already explained that the mechanism is gonna act as a medium between the spine or hip bone and the thigh bone. Since it's already parented to the spine bone, all we need to do is to add a copy rotation constraint so that it copies the thigh bone's rotation. We're gonna be using a neat little trick here to speed up adding a constraint to our bone. So let's go to pose mode. Let's first select the thigh bone, then add to the selection the mechanism bone and press Ctrl Shift C. This will open up a window where we can select different types of constraints to apply to our child bone. In this case, the parent bone is the thigh bone since we selected it first and the child bone is the mechanism one because we selected it last. So let's select the copy rotation one. As you can see in the copy rotation tab, the bone option is already taken by the thigh bone. This is a little trick you can do to save up some time when adding some constraints to your bones. We do need to change some options here so that it works properly. First, make sure that the mix option is on offset legacy. And finally, make sure that the target and owner options are on local space. Now comes a part that you may want to change depending on how much influence you want the thigh or leg to have over the butt's deformation. For example, having an influence of 1 means that the mechanism bone will follow completely the thigh bone. Whereas having an influence of say 0.2 which is the one I use, it means that the butt bone will follow the thigh bone ever so slightly. It will give this small rotation to the bone. And honestly, I think it looks way better over having a complete or higher influence. Now, like I said, you can choose the influence you want, but personally, I'm gonna leave it at 0.2 for now. All right, the mechanism bone is done. Now, before we start adding the last constraints to the deformation bone, let's move on to create the control bone, which we need for the constraints. So I'm gonna hide all the bones with all H, select the deformation bone, and I'm gonna extrude to the Y axis. So we'll be left with something like this. Now I'm gonna change the name of the bone to control.bot.l, as well as change the parent. We'll make this control bone the child of the mechanism bone. So let's parent it to the mechanism bone. Finally, disable the deform option because this bone won't be used for deforming the weights. All right, we are in the end game. The last thing we need to do is create the constraints for the deformation bone. So first I'm gonna select the control bone, then the deformation bone, once again, press Control shift c and we're gonna be adding three different constraints. So the first one we'll add is copy scale, then I'm gonna add damped truck, and finally stretch to. Now I'm gonna explain what these three constraints do. The copy scale constraint is to copy the scale of the control bone to the deformation bone. The damp track is to follow the control bone from the tip, so while the deformation is parented to the spine, this constraint will allow us to follow the control bone from the tip. Finally, the stretch 2 is used in combination with the damp track to allow a nice stretch the control bone. 
from the deformation mode, so that the mesh will deform much better. Those are a summary of what these constraints will be doing. The last thing we need to do is modify the copy scale one. We need to make sure that the target and owner options are both local space. Okay, now when we move the control bone, we can see how the deformation bone step is following nicely to this control bone. And it's actually stretching if we move it too far. Now, I'm gonna organize the layers for these bones. So I'm gonna create a layer called Def, another one called MCH, and finally, one called Control. This is just some good practice in organizing your layers. Deformation bones should be in the Def one, and the ones using Control in the character should be in Control. Mechanism, obviously, in MCH. You don't have to do this if you want, or if you are organizing your layers in another way, this is just the way I do it for my rigs, at least. Now I'm gonna mirror these bones so they are on the right side of the rig as well. So select all the butt bones, right click and select symmetrize. And there they are. If we select the newly mirror bones, we can see they have their correct constraints in their correct bones. Okay, so the controls and mechanisms are now finished. All we need to do now is to create the weights for the mesh we have. Since this is a basic human mesh, I'm going to use the automatic weights option and now I'm going to be checking how the mesh is deforming. Okay, it looks alright, but we need to check the deformation for the butt. As you can see, if we move the control bone, we can see how we're moving part of the butt. This is pretty great if we need to control this area and do some animation with it. However, if we move the tie bone, you can also see how the butt is following nicely along. So, the rigging works. But now I'm going to be modifying the weight so it has a better deformation. This part is going to be a bit of a time lapse, but I'll comment on important tools I use when weighting a bone. So I'm going to select the rig first in object mode, then select the mesh. In this case, the character. Change to weight paint, and now we have the bones along with the mesh selected in weight paint mode. So I'm going to select the deformation butt bone. And to do that, you just need to click on it while holding Alt. And this way you're going to select that bone. And as you can see, there's this amount of weight effect in this area. If we look at the spine or thighs bones, there's also a good amount of weight affecting it. So before the time lapse starts, I'm going to be telling you which areas I'll be modifying. The most important ones are obviously going to be the deformation butt bone but also the spine and tie bone. I'm also going to be using symmetry here, so I just have to weight paint the left area only. And finally, the tools that I'm going to be using are the draw option, but also the blur option. I find that this last one is quite useful when you just want to space out the weights and don't want them to end so abruptly. So, this will be a time lapse. If you want to skip to how the butt deforms with the new weights, then go ahead on to the next section.
All right, the rigging and weights are done. I do want to add a minor thing before we see the final result, and that is to add some bone visuals, also called widgets. These are optional, but sometimes very necessary to make sure your rig can be understood by an animator, as they are made to represent what a bone is supposed to do in the animation. Here's some examples of what I'm talking about. Notice how there isn't any of the normal visuals for the bones. Instead, it's all custom made. Now, for this case, the only visual we'll need is for the control bone, since that's the only one which will be visible here. So to do this first, I'm gonna go to object mode, create a circle, and with this circle, I'm gonna modify so that it resembles a wireframe sphere. So in edit mode, I'm gonna duplicate the circle, rotate it like this, duplicate it again, and rotate it again. And just like this, we have our widget for the control butt bone. Make sure to rename this to WGT butt control, something like this. So that we know this is a widget for the butt controller. Now I'm gonna go to the armature for the character, into pose mode, and select the bone to add the custom graphic. In this case, the control butt bone. Now let's go to the bone tab and open up Uber display. And in here, add it to the custom object option, the widget that we have created. And there it is. We can see that it's appearing on the bone. It looks a little bit big. So to fix that, I'm going to modify the scale of the object on the widget itself. So I'm going to go to object mode, select the circle or the widget, go into edit mode, and I'm going to scale it down a bit. And that's better. Now I'm going to put this graphic on the other bone for the other side. And there it is. Okay, we have a custom graphic for our butt bone. So we have arrived at the final result. I have modified the weights to be as good as they can be. Now if we move the leg, you can see that it's deforming quite nicely. And if we leave it here and start moving the butt controller, you can see that it nicely deforms the shape of the butt. This is just a nice way to add automation to your butt when moving the leg but also having a degree of control for moving the butt in a specific way. You can obviously make this more complex like adding more controllers so you can move individual parts of the butt but for this case it's quite simple and useful at the same time. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it, learn how to rig a butt in Blender and also understand the process behind it. With all that said, I hope to see you on the next video. Bye bye.